So Backbench Game Dev asks, what do you guys think uh, about when and where to use events slash actions and delegates? How often do you use them in a big project? Uh, in my mind, that question is, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. There's not enough information to answer that question. Um, there's varying use cases with varying different parameters and the unsatisfying answer is use them when you need to, where you need to. The question becomes, how do you know mm -hmm. when and where? And that comes down to experience. And we can go over some things that will help you figure those things out. But at the end of the day, events and delegates are just ways to talk between two classes. The way of decoupling this relationship where things need to know too much information about each other. And that is just one of many tools at your disposal. You can use observer patterns, you can use pub sub, you can use interfaces with injection, you can use strategies, you can use a million things that do the same kind of job. And it comes down to what mm -hmm. do you need it for? Which benefits do you need? Which costs are you willing to pay? And it's it's not something you can give a one-line answer to. Yeah. Uh, in general, the best advice I can say is if a system theoretically is entirely self-contained, does something and then spits out some output, whether it be an event or whether it be a finished object, you might expose that output as an event. That way, you could have something. For example, I, I built a system which would, um, you could take photos. That photo would be scanned um, for machine learning, and it would, it would figure out uh, what objects were in the were in the um, picture, and then it would give me a list of the items in the picture, and then I would go and do something with that information. I built a system where I had an event fired whenever an image had been scanned and information has come out of the scan. That way, I don't care who initializes the scan or who, who, in, in, who says, take image, look at it, say what's in it. I'm just listening for whatever comes out the other end of it. That's a good candidate for an event because it's something that is a discrete thing that happens at the end of some task. And I could take that image recognizing tool, move it to a different application, not take photos, but instead iterate a folder of photos and still listen to events, and all the code still works, and it still keeps all of itself neatly contained. That kind of thing is a good candidate for events, but it's so hard to come up with. Like, I can't give you a five-step rule checklist that you can figure out to tell every time you need to use an event. It just comes down to how how and when you need to use it. And did you have a better idea, Charles? Because well, I, can't, I can't answer that I question. was trying to think of the opposite. Like, when would you absolutely not use an event? And I think in a case where you've got... Uh, Two, two classes, two objects that are allowed to know about each other and the logic that uh, that runs between them, the, the collaboration that they have, I guess, to speak at a higher level. Let's say you have two objects that are collaborating together. and That's a good point. It should be directly relation, directly proportional to how close yes, the relationship yeah. so is. You, Further apart, the more events are practical, the closer together, the less. Yeah, I think it becomes a function of the distance you want to put, the boundary, if you will, you want to place between two different classes. And then another thing to consider is, are we talking about a synchronous action that is very short or, or small? Or, or are we talking about something that is a long running action that I need to wait on, for instance? Um, mm -hmm. You know, another thing, another way I've seen this question come up is like for interfaces, um, do I need to, let's say I have a health bar, am I going to uh, listen to an event, player got damaged or did player damaged, or can I just get a reference to the player and just on every update, look at player.health and update my health bar. And, uh, you know, again, it's one of those things where it just really depends on your situation. Um, and so I think another one is, is a good example is one to one versus mm, one to many. Okay, yeah. If you're doing a task where it's, you know, um, process a thing. So, you know, I give you a letter, you put a stamp on it, you give it back to me. It's a bit arbitrary for me to listen to events of you being finished putting stamps on things. And then I hand you a letter waiting to get my letter with a yeah. stamp back when it, it would make more sense to sort of say, um, that's just a one-to-one -one thing. I hand you a thing, I get a, a callback function would be a good candidate for that. Do mm -hmm. thing, come back to me when you're finished precisely with the exact single thing I asked you to do. An event would be more like a bell in a shop door. Someone has entered the shop. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. You need to be aware whenever anybody enters the shop. It could be one person, 10 people, whatever. And it's not like you're dealing with one person at a time. It's more 
just in case I need to be aware of the door and the things that happen about the door separately from this is a single task yeah. one-to-one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So it, I think it's a function of boundaries. It's, it's a function of, you know, how, if you have to wait for something to run, if, if you care about uh, if you care about this collaborator and some action that it does and you need to uh, react to it every single time it happens or if, you know, there's definitely a lot to consider there. And so, yeah, how long is the string? How do you answer this question? Unfortunately, like most programming questions like this, it really depends. And and also, like, there, there's an undercutting problem with pretty much this entire, everything we've talked about up to this point, which is that the more architecture mm. you add predominantly the less, less performant your application is going to be. And that's usually fine in a normal application because you're dealing with event-based stuff. You're dealing with, I click button, I type some values in, I press OK, I scroll through, and everything is done in this slow, event-driven way. Games are fast-paced, constantly running, updating stuff, varying different things. And so you don't want to put in all of those layers of application architecture when it's not necessary. And an event is slow by nature because you are caching a function reference and you are calling mm -hmm. it when you need to. And that might be a list of function references. And all of a sudden you're doing more work in distributing messages. I guess the best example is like Chinese whispers, right? You could have a, you could have a network of people where you tell one person something and it goes around in a circle and every one person tells everybody, it will take a long time for everyone to be updated. But it's less, it's less dynamic to just say, hey, everyone, this happened. <laughs> But it's faster and it takes less effort and, for everybody but involved. The drawback is you got to know everyone you're whispering to. You have to know everybody. That's the thing. So it, you have to figure that's out really what, funny, when and where that's valuable. <laughs> it's, Just making this stuff up like, as I go. You're either, <laughs> you're, either, you're either A, you're in a room and you can see everyone you're screaming at, or B, you're whispering into a phone and you have no idea who's going to know about it. <laughs> Yeah, but you yeah. just have to you just have to know that your little your whisper may not get to everyone as quickly as you might like. Or or maybe maybe if we're if we're not talking specifically about events in that way, you could say it's like writing ten letters and Ooh. sending them to ten people. You're having to like go through all the effort of writing the letters and distribute them, versus shouting out the window and hoping everyone hears. <laughs> um, so yeah, so events event architecture by nature is going to be slower, and so I tend to not use it for things that are loop based and that's why i don't like things like i'm not a fan of how unity is now doing input with this event dispatching yeah. stuff now it's not really that slow but it's just annoying that you're subscribing to when buttons fire and i know why they're doing it they're doing it because multiple things could hypothetically listen but i don't like that they're basically saying let's not isolate all the input in one place distribute it so that you can have really cool systems where when you turn on this object it takes over input for a while and then you turn it off and then this object takes over input that's, it gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom, but you're intrinsically, one, separating input around your app, and two, you're having to sort of tie this event architecture when, truth be told, efficient engines poll for input. Not as sexy and it's a bit messier to work with, but get state of controller, wait till end of frame, get state of controller, start a frame, compare previous state of controller to current state of controller, that constitutes the input. That's sort of the <laughs> clean and fast way of doing it. And event systems are sort of a nice architecture but again, you're paying the cost yeah. of doing that. So it's a decision they made. And it's not a, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that you have the same problems that Unity does. You have to look at the solutions, look at the problems, and try to fit the right one to what you're doing. Yeah?